What's up, YouTube? It's your favorite dead president, the JFK, here at Poetic Darkness, bringing you guys something a little special today. You know, I have really haven't been focusing on tutorials, and that's really not the purpose of the channel. But a uh, few special attacks and just um, a rebirth, if you would, um, of an individual named Master Wheat, who, you know, was part of the dark side and he came to poetic darkness for a second chance to become a better person um you know he just he wanted to change and he wanted to make a difference in this world and we wanted to teach him the ways of fair play and uh that's kind of what has been occurring over the past few weeks and this i feel like this past war was just a culmination of everything he has learned everything he has practiced um Really, you know, just everything that we have sought through prayer for one Master Week. So, I wanted to bring you guys a special Laloon episode and show you guys it is not dead at Town Hall 10. You do not have to do bowlers. Um, you do not have to do Valks for every attack. You can still attack in the air and you can still have a pretty good time and have an effective attack as far as that goes. So, I want to break down the Laloons that Wheat has been doing that he's been practicing quite a bit lately and what he's kind of doing is a queen walk cold-blooded laloon so he's bringing you know between four and five healers he's got a golem and then he's got three hounds as far as that goes and you know then he's just kind of filling with some wizards wall breakers loons and minions and all that good stuff so what he's looking at when he's looking at this base first of all is he's trying to figure out okay what can he get with his queen walk portion because for any queen walk you want to figure out okay you know what can i take out with the walk and can i make sure my queen does walk the first way so we actually had the luxury of having a town hall nine do his exact same attack for him before he tried to do it so we kind of sketched the plan out and we wanted to figure out you know where the wall breakers should go if they would work and also where the queen would go if we placed her in a certain spot so after the scout we kind of had an idea on the walk and that is really i mean if you can pull that off and you can take out um you know an ad the royals the cc and even an it if possible you've got some awesome value and the rest of your attack as long as you don't screw it up is probably going to go pretty well so what we did here is he started his aq right around this area actually and he just wanted to take out these buildings right here and he wanted to actually path her into the enemy royals he also wanted to path her into the cc right here after that portion of the attack was over he's actually dropping a golem and he's dropping his bk right in here because he wants to get to that inferno right there so that's a huge piece so it's actually two pieces it's the walk it's actually getting the royals the cc out of the way and an ad out of the way and then he's using his king his golem and his queen a combination of them all to take out one of the discos so that's the first portion of the attack and then it's the flight which is the fun stuff um and it's kind of all downhill as the saying goes from there as far as that goes so once he's really essentially taken out this portion of the base with his walk and with his opener he's going to deploy his hounds and his loons counterclockwise and if you actually look right here one freeze is actually going to be able to take care of the ad and the disco here which is huge i mean i would recommend if you're building a base and you want to be anti laloon do not i repeat do not put your ad and your it's or your discos right next to each other because someone's going to freeze them and they're going to get great value for that spell as far as that goes something else to kind of notice in a loon attack you still do need to pay attention to the air blowers the air sweepers whatever the hell you want to call them and the way he actually did this attack his walk was able to take out the first sweeper and then the second sweeper the way he deployed with his loons actually coming across here the sweeper you know when you look at the, the radius of how it is did not even touch any of his air troops so it did not affect his raid one bit so he's able to really um negate the sweepers and he's able like we said earlier to get that freeze on the isco and the ad when he's going counterclockwise as far as that goes around the base so without further ado let's just kind of get into this first attack 
and enjoy it and then enjoy another attack with the exact same strat just on a different anti three star base so as always guys really appreciate your support thanks for watching the channel and uh, hope you enjoy the reborn master wheat what's up guys we are back here for the attack portion of the vid so without further ado let's just kind of get into it um, and as we mentioned you know he's gonna start the queen walk right in between 9 and 12 and he's gonna try to get his queen to go clockwise right into this compartment right here and you're just gonna see you know the value of the walk taking out the AQ taking out the sweeper taking out the CC taking out the AD and then he's gonna drop his goblin king to take out one of the discos so let's just kind of get into this and you guys can kind of see how it plays out in the replay slash live attack so um, just kind of remember that he was able to get a scout here with his plan just to make sure the AD was going to do what he wanted her to do as far as that goes. So this is going to be a standard troop comp really that we uses and you can use something similar like this in your own loon attacks. You know just use that golem, use those three hounds, um, quite a few loons and take the three rages in one free so the rages are going to be used for the aq and they're going to be used for the loons and it just really depends on the base um you know if you're going to use one rage for the aq and then two for the loons or two for the aq and one for the loons as far as that goes so um drops that rage down when it happened live i was actually kind of worried that the healers weren't going to get in it you can see they just barely get in it um perfectly and he takes care of it so now when his queen steps in a little bit further he's going to pull that cc out where he dropped the poison too. I mean, if he had dropped any further on top of the queen, those loons would have probably been able to get to her and uh, potentially drop a bomb. So that was uh, pretty clutch as far as that goes. So now he's, uh, you see, wall breaks in here with a golem and the king. The golem's still soaking all the damage from those two point defenses. The king's only taking the wizard tower, um, doesn't even have to worry about it. And then he does not wait to start his flight. He's going to start the flight right away get those hounds going through and just like we talked about that freeze is going to get some awesome value um it is not going the ad is not going um no worries for that hound and uh the only thing you know maybe you could have done is hold that freeze for a little bit longer but i'm really not one to critique um a sexy three star raid from the uh newly converted master wheat as far as that goes so um you know you can see those loons just working their way around like we talked about that air sweeper really didn't even bother the main group and he still saved his phase for his queen so i mean she just did some incredible work on those point defenses and all the storage is right around there as far as that goes so now i mean it's just clean up at this point tons of pups cleaning up got those loons going to that tesla and then they're going to be able to handle the bk shrine or the altar as far as that goes uh, and it is a good game so let's watch one more attack by weed as well so we didn't break this one down but it's the same comp just on a different base as far as that goes all right guys here for the second attack from uh from mw the newly converted fair play convert like i uh have already mentioned a few times so anyway he is going to come from six o'clock on this attack and he's going to wall break in right in here and he's going to be able to get the cc two ad's with his aq and a disco um huge value for that aq walk it's honestly kind of ridiculous as far as that goes and then he's going to be able to use one golem and one wizard right here just to create the funnel. He's going to be able to get his BK in right here and take out a wizard tower, archer tower, cannon, and the enemy AQ. So from there, he's going to do his loon deployment counterclockwise. And he's going to start it right around 5 o'clock. Just kind of have them filter all around this side of the base and just cut right through and carve it apart. So let's watch this replay. Um, and I will try to serenade you and uh, calm you with the sound of my voice as far as that goes. Um, so uh, here's MW. He's going in at 6, just kind of like we talked about. He's got one whiz there just to create the funnel, just to make sure um, she moves in the direction he wants her to, which is obviously uh, the first most important part of an AQ walk as far as that goes. So once he knows that she's attracted all the attention, she's starting to work on the storages, he's going to drop these wall breakers here. Once again, scouted attack, someone was actually able to practice this walk to make sure there were no um, bombs here as far as that goes and to pull the CC form so he 
kind of had an idea what was going on as far as that goes. So now he's taken out the first AD, this AQ. He's also, he's going to get that Wiz Tower, that Archer Tower. He's going to get the BK, um, and he's going to get the whole CC. So pretty incredible value for this walk as far as that goes. So now he's going to start the Golem going um, just because he doesn't want time to be an issue, and he knows that he's got no issues with the AQ with that Rage owner. She's going to stay up as far as that goes. So now um, gave his wizard, if you notice, at three, plenty of time to cut that storage down to make sure the BK went exactly where he wanted him to go. Um, he's going to have to phase the queen just because of that giant bomb there. Didn't want to take any chances as far as that goes. Um, I mean, it's pretty. And once those ADs go down and she starts working on that expo, I mean, it is just game over at that point. Starts loon deployment like we talked about going counterclockwise from between 4 and 5 o'clock. Um, uses that freeze for the IT just to give his loons a chance to get in. And he saved one rage just to get them through both of those Teslas and anything else that could bother them um, or could hinder the raid as far as that goes. Um, once it gets to this point, I mean, it is game over. He's got pups going crazy. He's still got his Max Hound that hasn't popped. He's still got his Queen up um, going strong, and it's just, you know, tons of overkill on this base. So this wasn't a Max Town all 10, but it's still a pretty developed Town all 10 and still semi-anti three-star. So you can definitely still Laloon. Um, you do not have to focus on Bowlers. You don't have to focus on Valks. I mean, there's still alternative alternative strategies that still work for a high-level gameplay as far as that goes. So uh, anyway, guys, really appreciate you guys checking out these videos. I know Wheat does too, um, and I know he is really proud as far as the progress that he has made under the discipleship of Poetic Darkness and the fair play doctrine that we have instilled with him as far as that goes. So uh, anyway, like I said, thanks more for watching guys and uh, hope you enjoyed and until the next time